Let's proceed to contracts. Okay, tapos na tayo sa obligations. Okay. First, the definition. What is a contract? It is a meeting of minds between two persons whereby one binds himself with respect to the other to give something or to render some service. Okay, first question. Can there be a contract even without a written instrument? The answer is yes. Okay? By the definition, a contract is a meeting of minds. Okay? As long as the parties have meeting of minds, there is already a contract. The law does not require a written instrument. The law requires meeting of minds. Okay? However, mere agreement does not result into a contract. And mo yan, ha? Not all agreements can be considered as contracts. However, all contracts are agreements. Okay? Ano yung magdetermine kung ang isang agreement ay kontrata o hindi? Diba? Kung may obligation na nag arise from such agreement, then it is a contract. Okay? If the agreement does not have or if from the agreement no obligation will arise, then it is not a contract. Okay? Ngayon, kailangan mong ma-familiarize yung sarili mo sa mga iba't ibang kinds or classifications ng contracts. Okay? So, simulan natin. According to perfection, meron tayong consensual, real, and formal. Okay? Pag sinabing consensual, pag sinabing consensual contracts, yan siya. As defined by the law, a contract is perfected by mere consent or meeting of minds as to the object and consideration. Okay? May meeting of minds as to object and consideration, meron ka ng contract kapag consensual contracts. Ano naman yung real contracts? Ang real contracts, perfected naman siya upon delivery of the object of the contract. Okay? Examples. Sinabi dyan sa Article 1316. Di ba? Pledge, deposit, kumodato, mutuum. Okay? Formal or solemn contracts. Perfected naman yan, di ba? Upon complying with the form prescribed by law. Okay? Certain form must be executed uh, in order for its validity. Okay? For its validity. Example. Typical example niyan is a donation. Okay? Ang donation, kailang mag-comply yan sa, mga for sa forms na in establish by law. Okay? Dadaanan naman natin yan. Okay? According to cause, onerous gratuitous. Pag sinabing onerous, may exchange ng valuable considerations. Okay? Example, contract of sale. Okay? Gratuitous, when one party receives no equivalent consideration. Di ba? Example, donation. Diba? Remuneratory. Uh, ang cost doon, service or benefit na binayaran, remunerated, kaya nga siya remuneratory. Diba? Example, contract of employment. You will render service to a company. Ang kapalit, babayaran ka ng company. Okay? According to importance or dependence, of one upon another, principal, accessory, and preparatory. Pag sinabing principal contract, diba? a contract that can stand by itself, kahit walang other contract na nakakabit sa kanya, diba? kontrata pa rin siya. Pag sinabi accessory, diba? it cannot stand or its existence depends solely, it depends upon another contract. Example, contract of pledge. Diba? Hindi ka pwede magkaroon ng sangla kung hindi ka muna uutang. Ang principal contract mo ay yung utang. Ang accessory contract mo ay yung pledge o yung sangla. Okay? Preparatory. Example, contract of partnership. Diba? Bumuo ka ng partnership sa pamamagitan diba? ng agreement nyo ng mga parties, ng mga partners mo. Okay? So, yung contract of partnership, 
preparatory siya dahil pag nabuo mo na yung partnership, hindi lang naman yun ang gagawin mo, di ba? O may partnership na tayo, tapos na ba? Hindi. After yung contract of partnership, o mag enter ka na into another contract. Di ba? May either be contract of retainer to your clients, contract of sale. Di ba? Okay? Malinaw, preparatory contracts. Okay? According to name or designation, we have nominate and in nominate. Example and nominate, those which have names under the law. Example, contract of sale, contract of pledge, channel mortgage, diba? real estate mortgage. Pag sinaming nominate without any name under the law, okay? Ang typical niyan, yung ating mga Latin, di ba? Yung duot des, duot fascias, fascuot des, fascuot fascias. I give that you may give. I give that you may do. I do that you may give. And I do that you may do. Okay? Ano lang ang kailangan mong tandaan dyan sa inominate contracts? Okay? Tuloy muna natin to. Tandaan mo, dahil inominate contracts siya, di ba? Wala siyang pangalan under the civil code. Pero yung civil code nag-provide ng rules kung ano yung mag-govern sa mga ganyang kontrata. Okay? First, it shall be governed by agreement of the parties. Okay? Kung ano yung napagkasunduan nila, yun ang susundin. Kung walang agreement by the provisions of the civil code on obligations and contracts. Okay? Kung hindi pa rin, the rules governing the most analogous contracts. Kung ano yung pinakamalapit under the civil code na kontrata, pinakahawig. Example, a joint venture agreement. Wala naman sa civil code yan, di ba? O, pero ano yung pinakamalapit ha? na rules? Ano yung pinakamalapit na kontrata sa joint venture? Contract of partnership. So, apply mo yung rules on contract of partnership sa joint venture. Okay? Or the customs of the place. Okay? So, okay na siguro yung mga kinds natin or classifications. Yung iba, madali nang intindihin. Tuloy na tayo sa fundamental characteristics or basic principles of contracts. Okay? Ano-ano yung mga yan? Ito, baka hindi mo nakikita sa libro. Di ba? Baka, hindi, baka yung ginagamit mong textbook, hindi explicitly sinabi ito. Pero nakakalat lang yan sa mga provisions under the contract. Under Title 2. Actually, di ba? Title 2 yan, contracts. Okay? Ano-ano yun? Number one, autonomy of contracts or liberty or freedom to stipulate. Mutuality of contracts. Obligatory force of contracts and compliance in good faith. Relativity of contracts. Consensuality of contracts. Okay? So, isa-isahin natin yan. Okay? Autonomy of contracts. Nandiyan dyan yan sa Article 1306. Sabe, the contracting parties may establish such stipulations, clauses, terms, and conditions as they may deem convenient, provided they are not contrary to law, morals, good customs, public order, or public policy. Okay? So, makikita mo dyan, parties are free to stipulate whatever terms, stipulations, or conditions. Diba? As, may, as they may deem convenient. So, balik tayo dun sa dati. Parang yung sa conditions, di ba? Pwede ka rin maglagay ng kahit anong condition as long as yung condition is not contrary to law, morals, good customs, public order, public policy. Mas lalo dito sa contract, di ba? Siyempre, yung kontrata, dapat irespeto niya yung batas. Okay? Kasi yung presumption, the law forms part of the contract. Okay? All provisions of law are understood to be incorporated in a contract. So, dapat alam mo kung ano yung mga pinagbabawal na, na pagkasunduan o maging subject ng isang kontrata. Again, remember class, ignorance of the law excuses no one from, the, from compliance therewith. So, dapat alam mo kung contrary to law yan. Di ba? So, dapat alam mo. Okay? Ano yung mga yun? Examples. 
stipulations that are void for being contrary to law. Nadaanan mo na, di ba? Waiver for future fraud. Pactum lunina, pactum commissorium, pactum non aliendo. Okay? Di ba? Parang pakinggan pa lang, parang pangit na. Di ba? Oh. Sir, ano ba yung pactum lunina? Yung pactum lunina, to, yan. Stipulation yan in a contract of partnership, excluding one of the partners in, sh in sharing in the profits. Mag-exclude ka ng isang partner sa sharing sa profits. Hindi pwede. Di ba? Hindi pwede. Contrary to law. Okay? Ano naman yung pactum commissorium? Ayan naman yung stipulation sa mga kontrata ng sangla, sa pledge, sa mortgage. Di ba? na kung sakaling hindi makapagbayad ng principal amount ng loan si debtor automatic yung sinanla mapupunta na kay creditor magiging owner na si creditor doon sa pinagsanglaan siguro tataka ka dyan ah bawal pala yun oo bawal yun hindi pwede na pag hindi ka nakabayad automatic na doon na sa pinagkautangan mo magiging owner ng pinagkautangan mo nung bagay na sinanla mo Mm, bawal yun. Siguro nagtataka ka. Sir, bakit yung mga... Ang alam ko, ganun eh. Pag ako nagsangla, tapos hindi ako nakabayad, nire-remata. Kinukuha yung property, di ba? Nire-remata nung pawn shop. Oo. Pero hindi automatic na siya yung magiging owner. Kaya nga may tinatawag na auction sale. Di ba? Ang tawag nga sa pawn shop eh, subasta. Sinusubasta yung mga naremata na sangla. Ibibenta muna yung open sa public. Diba? Pero hindi automatic na yung pawn shop na yung may-ari. Kasi, contrary to law. Pactum commissorium. Okay? Ano naman yung pactum non aliendo? O, yan naman yung stipulation kapag nagsanla ka ha, ng isang property particularly sa mortgage yan eh, sa mortgage, na pinagbabawalan kang ibenta yung property mo without consent ng creditor. Okay? Without consent ng creditor. Bawal pa rin yun. Eh sir, ba't ganun? Eh syempre, sa'yo pa rin naman yun, sinanla mo lang. So, hindi ka pwedeng pagbawalan na ibenta yun. Okay? Sa'yo pa rin yun eh. Okay? Hmm. Naninaw ha? Ang mahirap dyan class Kung paano mo i-determine Kung contrary to Public policy, morals Di ba? Yan ang, yan ang mahirap Ngayon, para maintindihan mo yan Gagabayan ka naman ng Supreme Court Sa mga decisions nila sila yung nagsasabi, di ba? Pero as a general rule, paano mo ba madedetermine kung contrary to public policy? Karaniwan, sinasabi rin naman. Halimbawa, sa Constitution, o sinasabi doon na uh, the Constitution, di ba, shall protect, di ba, the state shall protect labor. O, so, halimbawa, yun. So, yun ang general policy natin. The state shall protect labor. So, anumang batas na hindi o, kaso, o anumang kasunduan na hindi naaayon sa declared public policy under the Constitution ay mapapawalang visa for being contrary to public policy. O, ganun lang siya. Di ba? E halimbawa, ito, restraint of trade. Otherwise known as non-involvement or non-compete clause. Okay? Ito, typical to, di ba, sa mga kontrata. Halimbawa, CPA ka na, masayang masaya ka, pumasok ka sa isang malaking auditing firm. Tapos biglang may stipulation dun sa kontrata, sa employment contract mo, na hindi ka pwedeng magtrabaho sa ibang auditing firm kapag nag-resign ka dito sa company namin. Valid ba yun? O, di ba? O, itake natin to example na to. Si Macy worked for XYZ Plans as SVP or Senior Vice President under a five-year employment contract containing a clause which reads, 
in case of separation from the company, meaning new XYZ plans, Macy shall not for the next two years thereafter engage in or be involved in the same business or belonging to the same printed industry as the company. After two years from her employment with XYZ plans, Macy stopped reporting for work and assumed the position of Vice President for Sales of FH FHJ Plans, a similar printed company. Okay? Tingin mo, magagalit si XYZ? Hmm? Tingin mo, magagalit si XYZ? Oo naman, magagalit. Diba? So, nagdemanda ngayon si XYZ. Nagdemanda si XYZ Plans. Dinemanda niya si Macy, demanding for damages. Okay? Ang defense ngayon ni Macy, sabi niya, unenforceable daw tong clause na to. Okay? Unenforceable daw tong clause na to for being against public order or public policy. Okay? Sinong mananalo? Di ba? Ang sabi ni Macy, eh hindi, nililimitahan nila eh. Nililimitahan nila yung employment ko. Against public policy yan. Eh di ba sabi ng constitution? The state shall protect the labor. Oh? Sino mananalo? Ang mananalo, si XYZ. Okay? Sabi ng Supreme Court, ang non-involvement clause, di ba? Kagaya nito, restraint of trade to, di ba? Restraint of trade to eh. Ang non-involvement clause is not necessarily void for being in restraint of trade. Okay? As long as there are reasonable limitations as to time, trade, and place. Siyempre, kailangan din daw ng reasonable protection on the part of the employer. Okay? So, tatandaan mo, hindi void ang restraint of trade as long as there are reasonable di ba? limitations as to time, trade, and place. Oh, let's analyze. No. Yung clause ba ng kontrata ni Macy, may reasonable limitation as to time, trade, and place? As to time, yes, for the next two years. Di ba? Trade in the same pre-need industry. O, so, sabi ng Supreme Court, sabi ng Supreme Court, o, allow diyang clause na yan. Hindi yan necessarily void. Kasi kailangan din natin proteksyonan yung mga employers. Lalo na yan, pre-need industry. Di ba? May mga confidential documents. Di ba? confidential clients tapos bigla kang tatawid doon sa competitor nila na wala man lang protection yung present employer mo. So valid sabi ng Supreme Court. Okay? Let's take another example. How about this one? Isabel was a student in LDM School of Accountancy and enjoyed a scholarship with a stipulation that in case she decided to transfer to another school she will refund all the expenses under the scholarship. Okay? After three and a half semesters, she transferred to another school. When she requested documents and transcript of records, she was asked to reimburse first the scholarship funds as provided in her scholarship. Okay? Siguro magtitake na siya ng board, di ba? Kaya kailangan niya ng mga transfer credentials ng TOR niya sa old school niya. E eh, biglang sabi ng LDM school of accountancy, eh bago na may bigay sa'yo, reimburse mo muna. Lumabag ka sa kontrata natin eh. O. Oh. Di ba? Lumabag ka sa kontrata natin. Sinong mananalo ngayon? Hmm. E eh, pinirmahan niya yun, di ba? Hmm. Pinirmahan niya. May kontrata siya under the scholarship. Oh. May clause dun na hindi siya pwedeng lumipat. Sinong mananalo? Okay. Ang sabi ng Supreme Court, okay, si Isabel na mananalo. Yung sinabi daw na stipulation na yon, na i -re niya lahat ng expenses under sa scholarship niya kapag lumipat siya ng school is void for being contrary to morals and public policy. Bakit daw? Sabi ng Supreme Court, scholarships should not be a propaganda matter. They are awards for merit. Okay? Yun ang sinabi. 
Kaya pansin mo ngayon, magkaiba na yung scholarship sa grant. Di ba? Nililinaw na yan. Okay? Kasi nga, sinabi ng Supreme Court, dito sa kaso na ito, okay? Ang scholarship daw is reward for merit and should not be a propaganda matter. Okay? So, nanalo si Isabel dito. Nakuha niya yung mga transcript niya, transfer credentials niya, without refunding the expenses under the scholarship. Okay? Tuloy tayo. How about mutuality of contracts? The contract must bind both contracting parties. Its validity or compliance cannot be left to the will of one of them. Okay? Madali lang intindihan. Based yan sa essential equality of the parties. Okay? A party cannot revoke or renounce a contract without the consent of the other. Okay? Madali lang intindihan. Tuloy tayo. Relativity of contracts. Contracts take effect only between the parties, their assigns and heirs, except in case where the right and obligations arising from the contract are not transmissible by their nature or by stipulation or by provision of law. Okay? Tanda mo, a contract is binding between the parties, their assigns and heirs. Okay? So, tinatawag din yung privity of contracts principle. Okay? Contracts, as a general rule, tanda mo, contracts take effect only between the parties, their assigns and heirs. Except, rights and obligations arising from the contract are not transmissible by nature, stipulation, or by law. Familiar ba? Diba? Familiar? Laging ganyan, stipulation, nature, law. Okay? However, class, a third person may be bound or may have a right under a contract. Involving contracts creating real rights. Okay? Creating real rights. Okay? Tanda mo yan. Example. Contracts creating real rights. Alimbawa, sinanla yung, sinanla yung, uh, ah, nangutang si A kay B. Sinoportahan niya yung utang na yon ng sangla sa lupa ni A. Okay? Okay? Alam mo, kapag yung titulo ng lupa, sinangla yan, ina-annotate yan sa likod. Okay? Ina-annotate yan sa likod. Sinasabi na itong lupa na ito ay nakasangla. Okay? Para kung may bibili man ng lupa, kung may bibili man ng lupa, may inform siya na itong titulong ito ay nakasangla. Ngayon, binenta ngayon ni A itong lupa kay C. Hawak na ni C yung titulo. Okay? Si C ba, party ba dun sa utang ni AKB? Hindi, di ba? Pero bound siya dun sa sanglaan kahit third person siya. Kasi yung contract creates a real right. Okay? Uha? Contracts in fraud of creditors. Madali, nadaanan na natin sa Oblicon, di ba? Action Pauliana, di ba? In fraud of creditors. Interference by third person in a contract. Sa 1314, di ba? Kung ini-induce ka to violate the contract, oh, kasama siya. Stipulation for a two-way. Or stipulation in favor of third person. If a contract should contain some stipulation in favor of a third person, he may demand its fulfillment provided he communicated his acceptance or obligor before its revocation. Okay? So, tandaan mo, ang stipulation in favor of a third person is a gratuitous benefit accorded to a third person. So, there must be a clear and deliberate grant of benefit in favor of a third person. Okay? So, apektado pa rin siya. Exception yan sa relativity of contracts. Okay? Hmm. Hindi pwede yung dalawang party lang yung mag-usap. Kailangan kasama na siya si third person kasi may stipulation in favor of that third person. Okay? A stipulation in favor of a third person conferring a clear and deliberate favor upon him in which a stipulation is merely part of a contract entered into by the parties, neither of whom diba, acted as agent of the third person. Okay? Ano ba example niyan? Ano ba? 
kapag ikaw operator ka ng public utility vehicles, meron kang insurance na kinukuha. Diba? O yun, yung insurance na yun, in favor yun sa passengers. O, so, yun, yung mga yan, example ng stipulation, in favor of third persons. Okay? Consensuality. Obviously, ito yung tinutukoy, di ba? Doon sa Article 1305, contracts are perfected by mere consent. Okay? Except, siyempre, yung sinabi natin classifications ng contract kanina, as to perfection, except real contracts perfected upon delivery of the object of the obligation, or formal or solemn contracts, which are perfected upon compliance with the formalities and form required by law. Okay? So, tandaan mo ha, as a general rule, contracts are perfected by mere consent. Except those contracts which need to comply with additional requirements as provided by law. Example, real contracts, informal or solemn contracts. Okay? What else? Pag sinabing consensuality, contracts must be voluntarily entered into by the parties. Kaya nga consensual, di ba? Meeting of minds. A person cannot be compelled to enter into a contract. Except in contracts of adhesion. O, siguro baka nagugulat ka dyan. Ano ba yung contracts of adhesion? Contracts where one party merely signs carefully prepared documents. Yun yung adhesion contracts. Di ba? Ah, sorry. Interpretation na pala to. Sorry. Pag sinabing contracts of adhesion, Okay? Uh, merong kontrata na actually, hindi ka na nabigyan ng chance to negotiate. Nakaprepare na yung contract, pipirma ka na lang. O, saan yan? Example. School, di ba? O, sa school. Pupunta ka sa school, nakaprepare na yung contracts, tapos sa dulo, di ba, pipirma ka sa enrollment. Sa bus, sa insurance. Okay? Yan ang mga tinatawag na contracts of adhesion. Diba? Yung, the terms, yung terms niya and conditions uh, were already prepared by the other party. Okay? Tapos ipepresent na lang sa'yo diba? para mag-adhere ka kaya nga contract of adhesion. Wala nang negotiation. Example, Grab Express, LBC, mga ganyan. Diba? Para bang, o oh, ito yung kontrata namin. Kung kukunin mo kami, ito, pirma ka. Kung ayaw mo, di sa iba ka. O ganun yung, ganun yung style. Okay? As a rule, a contract of addition is a valid contract. Kaya huwag kang makikinig ha, na kapag contract of addition, void. Mali. As a rule, valid yan. Okay? Diba? Valid yan. Yun nga lang. Ang sabi ng law, ito na yon, tong slide na to. Kung yung contract of addition daw, diba, ay may ambiguous terms. May malalabong terms. Okay? Yung kontrata na yon should be strictly interpreted against the one who prepared such contract and liberally in favor of the other party who is usually helpless to bargain for better terms. So, i-interpret mo siya in such a way na ang makikinabang ay yung pinapirma na lang doon sa kontrata at hindi yung gumawa ng kontrata. Kasi syempre siya naman yung gumawa ng kontrata, siya rin yung dahilan ba't malabo yung kontrata. Okay? Hmm. Paalala ko lang ha, dito sa consensuality nga pala. As a general rule, contracts are perfected by mere consent, except real contracts, formal contracts. However, however, tandaan mo to, future real contracts are consensual. Okay? Future real contracts are consensual. Example. Diba? To make a deposit, to make a pledge, consensual yan. Okay? Consensual yan. Pero yung pledge, pero yung deposit, real contracts yan. Okay? Tanda mo yan, ha? Tuloy tayo. Obligatory force. Madaling intindihin. Obligations arising from contracts shall have the force of law between the contracting parties and should be complied with in good faith. Kung na mga, nasa 1159 pa yan. Nauna na yan. Di ba? Upon perfection of the contract, the parties are bound to the following. The fulfillment of what has been expressly stipulated. 
diba? the consequences which according to their nature may be in keeping with good faith, usage, and law. Madali lang intindihin. Okay? Kapag nakapag-kontrata ka, okay? siguro doon mong susundin mo yung kontrata mo. Okay? Bakit? Kasi yung contract na yun shall have the force of law between the contracting parties. Pag lumabag ka, as if parang lumabag ka na rin sa batas, liable ka. Okay? So, tapos na yan, characteristics. Pero daanan muna natin itong elements of a contract. Number one, essential elements. Without them, a contract cannot exist. So, ito yung pinaka-important element. Ito yung next topic natin, iisa-isahin natin yung mga rules dyan. Pagsasamasamahin na natin uli yung mga articles na related para mas madali mong maunawaan. Okay? Tandaan mo, COC, Consent, Object, Cost, or Consideration. Natural elements, those that are deemed included in the contract unless set aside by the parties. Example, accessions and accessories. Di ba? Kahit hindi pinag-usapan, nadudun na yun. Accidental elements, those that are included only if stipulated by the parties. Okay? Example, discounts, terms. Di ba? Kung bigyan ka ng 30-day credit, mga ganyan. O, oh, yun. Accidental elements yun. Okay? Ang importante dito, I repeat, essential elements. Okay? Iisa-isahin natin yan. Okay? O, tapos na tayo. Okay? Thank you. God bless.